in the Lord always again I say rejoice 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 again I say rejoice 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 again I say rejoice So I'm just the MC here. Uh, my name is Bill Quigley and I'm part of the legal team and I just want to say what an honor it's been to be with uh, these seven brave, courageous, faithful people and what a great journey they've been on and the journey continues. They have uh, told the truth uh, despite the cost, they've taken their actions uh, despite the risks and they still have more consequences to go in their efforts to try to save all of our lives and the lives of all of our children and our grandchildren and the lives of everybody around the world because as the jury was not allowed to hear the submarines nuclear uh, weapons submarines that are at Kings Bay have 3,800 times as much destructive power as the weapons that were used on Hiroshima. Enough power to destroy life on Earth as we know it. And so they, uh, after two years of prayer and action and practice in that, they came together and took action to go on to Kings Bay and preach the word. Preach the word of love, preach the word of life, preach the word of peace, and they are paying a huge price for that, uh, as you all know. So uh, I would like to turn it over to, uh, let me just, uh, for background, for those who weren't in the, in the, the, in the courthouse, uh, all seven people were convicted of four, uh, all four counts. It was three felony counts and one misdemeanor count, and that would could possibly be as much as 20 years in prison. We hope that it will be much less than that. They are released on uh, the continuing bonds that they've been on and uh, will be due back in court here probably 60 to 90 days from now uh, for a sentencing, at which time they will be sentenced uh, to federal prison or probation or some combination uh, thereof. Um, so enough from us. Uh, I, I would say this just on behalf. I know that they would say it too. You have no idea how important it is to stand up there and be speaking the truth in a very tough place and to know that there are dozens and dozens and dozens of people in that courtroom, in the overflow courtroom, outside with signs, singing and supporting, and all of our friends and supporters at home. And it truly is a, a beloved uh, uh, justice community, and there's so much thanks due to all of you. So thank you very much. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for caring. And I think caring is the thing I want to hold up even more than the physical presence because I don't know if any of you looked at our jury, but as I looked at the jury, it struck me there wasn't a single person on it under 60. And I think that says a lot about why we get the kind of responses that we get to juries. And we need to be co active. Well, um, I'm there with them, but those who are younger need to be proactive and say, I want to be part of this jury system. I want to stop some of this herding of people into jails where they basically rot, because that's what most of our jails are about. But people with a conscience, people who care about justice and peace, 
need to be active for justice and peace in all of the variety of ways that we can be active. And this has to be one of them. They're sending, you know, being in jail and seeing the people coming in and coming in again and again and again um, from juries just like the one that's sitting up there right now. Um, it's one area where some of us could make a difference if we would. But thank you all for your caring. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your work for justice and peace. Bless you. Um, I want to certainly echo what Liz just said, Patrick O'Neill, and great gratitude for this turnout of so many friends. So many of us know, have known each other for decades, and it's, it's nice to see you all here. I just told Sister Megan Rice, well, I was at your trial and now you're at mine, so we kind of we support each other, and that's a wonderful thing. I, uh, and I feel a great sense of gratitude to approximately a dozen lawyers who helped us on this case. Right, right. And, and, and it was just, you know, we had a dozen smart lawyers. <laughs> Matt and his father-in-law, Vern, are two of them. Bill, of course, who just spoke. I'm not sure who's still here of the lawyers. Yeah. I think uh, I can't express enough thanksgiving because our trial was was difficult. Seven defendants, a lot of charges, a lot of details. And uh, it, we had some really good work there. I mean, I think that our legal team presented a real challenge to the woman who's considered the smartest judge around. And uh, she's respected even by the defense attorneys here. And ultimately, she did deny all our pretrial motions. And but that's nothing new. All right. That's it's not that Lisa Wood stood out as a person who denied good people their defenses. This has been going on for 30 years now, you know, 35, because I had all my defenses de denied in Orlando in 1984. So this has been going on a long time. I think ultimately uh, she was pretty good about letting us get some good stuff in our testimony, good stuff in our opening and closing arguments. I mean, she she reined us in a little bit, but. I think collectively we said what needed to be said, and in my case, probably too much. Uh, but, but, and you know, and I think anybody who's in this position, you know, this is we're in our fourth year as a community, the seven of us, and certainly we all probably have some regrets and some things that we're joyful about, and that's just the way it goes. I did, I did feel good about. Uh, I want to mention the the U.S. Attorney Carl Kanuk Kanoki. He, he was actually the nicest person we dealt with, <laughs> which is, you know, it's an unusual thing for the U.S. attorney to be the nicest person you dealt with, but he's a decent man. And I went up to him, you know, during the, during the deliberation of the jury, and I said, well, it's, it's a little bit unsettling, Carl, to not know if I'm going home with Steve Kelly through the back door or with my wife through the front door. And he said, don't worry, you're going through the front door. <laughs> and he had already decided, of course, that he was not going to recommend to Judge Wood to put us in custody, which, which was the clincher. If he had recommended that we be remanded, Judge Wood would have done that. And that's the feeling of several of the attorneys here. So that was a nice gesture. Uh, you know, we, we, that was a nice gesture. And I, I want to thank the members of the media here. And unfortunately, unless, you know, you don't want to count NCR as being part of, I don't think we want to count NCR as being part of the mainstream media, but that's about the closest we get. <laughs> we pick up, we pick up the, the Guardian, Morning right? Star. Morning Star. So there's still some, there's still some papers here that I, there's still some, there's still some news media here that I, the Ithaca Voice, amen. Uh, this is Martha. Uh, thanks, everyone. It's just been okay. It's been an incredible experience. It's not over yet. Um, the efficiency of the state can never be underestimated. <laughs> yet, yet we proceed in humility, and the weapons are still there. The treaties are being knocked down one after the next. But we are called to keep trying. Yes. 
and we will do this together. And we have no other choice. Thank you so much. Well, I wanted to thank whoever started singing first. I thought that was a remarkable way to leave the courtroom. I, sh yeah, I, I should have known. If it wasn't Ellen, it would have to be Teresa. So I, I really think the verdict was frankly reactionary. I mean, everything. I mean, they heard a lot. The judge did allow them to hear a lot. And it's a little frightening. that the nuclear weapons could be hidden in plain sight. Yeah. What more? What's more is you, the people who are standing here from many different states in our country. And we have to understand right now that we are a remnant for those of us who are Christian, we are a remnant. Otherwise, even for those who are not, for our friends who are Buddhists and atheists and all else, we remain a remnant of a spirit that I think was much stronger in our country at other periods of time. But we all know which way the wind is blowing. There is the Black Lives Matter moments. There is the, um, oh, the extinction, rebellion. the extinction rebellion. There's the Me Too movement. There's an activist community waiting just behind us. Oh, yeah. And as we had our forefathers like Daniel and Philip Berrigan and Liz Montgomery and Elmer Moss and others, um, each of us will be in that sort of position ourselves in the near future. So keep on keeping on, resist. not a microphone so I, I, I was thinking yeah and I, I, um, I was thinking that uh, great now you all can testify but here we are again um, and uh, uh, maybe just a few th uh, brief thoughts I'm so tired um, uh, this this saying in 12-step they say we're only as sick as our secrets and so I want to uh, we got this disarming process is revealing the weapons that are ours and revealing our own, all of our stuff, right? That's pretty clear in that space. And the model of disarming is done in community, uh, which is the form in which we get to work it out. So uh, we've been through four years with each other. We still love each other, but we have to be honest with each other too. <laughs> Both those things are happening. So what Carmen just said, uh, well, uh, one of the second thing was, um, I really appreciate when I get a taste, a little taste of maybe being taken by chains behind the door and over to the jail. I'm here now. I don't deserve it. I don't, I shouldn't uh, feel entitled to it. Um, but isn't it great? to go home and go to sleep and hug your kids and have some soup or whatever, right? Uh, and I'm thinking of Steve right now and I'm thinking of all of the people in the Glynn County Jail and in every jail across our country, 2.2 million and the detention centers. So um, keeping that in perspective, the last thing I want to say is um, Tagging on to what Carmen said, well, Martha, thank you, Martha. I love, love, love what every person in our community brings. And Martha, anyway, thank you for sharing that uh, the state's efficiency can be counted on and the um, weapons are still here, the, the treaties. Uh, anyway, uh, the work is ahead of us. But as far as Carmen's um, encouragement or, or hoping, hopeful words about a movement behind this, I, for me, it is really about not so much uh, that people have forgotten nuclear weapons, but that those of us who have known for 
decades about nuclear weapons, integrate those triplets. And then it will not be a matter of, oh, another movement, but how we are connected to all the very organic movements that exist today. So to that point, I had a story that came to me sitting in the courtroom today, waiting, and um, it's a tiny little thing. Our friend, uh, well, Dr. Nia Nunn is a, an educator and a, a beloved elder in the, in the Ithaca community. She's raising three sons, and one of her sons, when she was teaching him how to read, came back running to her a few days after they had a lesson with letters, and she said, he said, Mom, Mom, letters are everywhere. <laughs> it's pretty exciting. And then she was telling of being a professor at Ithaca College as a black woman, she was teaching about racism, and one of her students came back to her shortly after class, a week later after listening to Dr. Nia Nunn, and said, racism is everywhere. <laughs> and so I want to say, let's take the secret down, the veil down, the secret exposed, that the triplets are everywhere. They work together all the time and they make each other more deadly by their tripletness, right? And that we have choices about how, what we consent to and what we don't consent to. That's a nonviolent practice of withdrawing consent. Thank you and God bless you. It couldn't be more beautiful. Oi, vei. <laughs> I've once again I've been condemned to follow Claire. Um, no, I, I guess I would. I, I just want to say that um, the Pentagon. I am Mark Colville. The Pentagon has many installations, and we just walked out of one of them, right? It's, uh, it's a place where they weaponize the law, uh, they, and they wield it mostly against the poor. Um, the people of all the red-lined uh, neighborhoods in this county know that very well. And once in a while, people of privilege like us get a taste of it. And when we do, uh, we, should, we should think, we should hear the word guilty as a blessing on us. Okay, because it gives us an opportunity to stand with people who hear guilty all the time, every day. Um, and uh, Steve, Steve is going back, our brother Steve, back to, uh, to break bread with, uh, with many of those folks from these, uh, the neighborhoods in this county right now. So um, I, as, as other people have said, I, want, I think we should remember that. I think we should... Um, take the experience again that we that we have had here and shout it from the rooftops um, perhaps there's an audience that will listen to us that won't listen uh, to the others um, and so let's take that responsibility with us back to our neighborhoods we have obviously we have a lot of work to do in our neighborhoods we have a lot of work to do at our border our borders we have a lot of work to do at our drone bases and, and all of the, uh, the places throughout the world where the Pentagon continues to weaponize everything um, and destroy everything. And so, you know, we tried to raise a voice about that over the past few days. Um, I'm deeply grateful for the, uh, for the legal help and the, the, not just the legal help, but the, the friendship of all of the lawyers um, that, that have walked this path with us at their own expense, at their own sacrifice, um, w whatever, uh, whatever blessing might have come from, from this trial uh, could not have happened without you, and we thank you. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, looking forward, you know, to the next, uh, the next part of this journey. It, it never ends. And um, thank everybody for, uh, for being part of it. Let's see what happens next. Ships turn their swords, nations shall learn war no more. And into plowshares turn their swords, nations shall learn war no more. Everyone treat their mind and victory. So we 